I've had a cup of coffee, but somehow I'm still ready to go take a nap, even though I don't nap. Oh, it is, it is, this is like nap number two for most people. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> happy number that, two. I, oh, <laughs> yes. I live so vicariously through all the napping. Just tell me, just take a nice nap and just text it to me in detail, please. Like, what did you dream about? Like, I don't what did know. you feel like when you woke up? I don't know that I'm a, I'm capable of napping, actually. I, unless uh, I'm, like, really sick, then, yeah. I, then I'll nap. But otherwise, I'm just perpetually yeah. tired. I know. Because you're always, like, you, you have that moment. And you're like, am I going to fall asleep? Am I not? And then by the time you fall asleep, it's time to get up. Yes. It's no fun. Um, well, cool. This is fun. I know. It's just like hang time with Ryan. I know. This it's hang great. time. We're just having <laughs> coffee together. That's all. Ain't no thing. Yeah. Um, but there are so many questions um, that actors have that um, are left unanswered. So oh. let's pick at your brain a little right. bit. Hopefully there's something left. I, there is, I'm sure there's plenty left. More than I have, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I want to start with, you've been doing so many fun IG Lives with actors. Mm -hmm. um, so many amazing actors. And I'm just curious. I've watched as many as I could. But was there anything during these lives that you have learned as a casting director just hearing from their experience or their perspective that you were kind of like oh I'd never really thought of that or I never really um thought about maybe an experience that they've had to go through um I think I think the most interesting thing that I've picked up from those mm -hmm. which I think we can all take a a leaf from that book of, you know, the, their takeaway looking back at their own journeys has been the, the if they could talk to themselves, you know, mm. however long ago mm -hmm. it's been, is that to be kinder to themselves. Yeah. And I think that that's something that w whether you're in front of the camera or behind it is yep. something that we all need to yeah. embrace. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a big thing. And then I, part, like things that I never even thought about of how actors have to like a whole different skill set of uh, Lucas Gage was talking about yesterday of like ADR acting. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't even, Oh well, yeah. I've never even thought about that. <laughs> right. We don't think it, well, we, you have a little bit of ADR experience <laughs> if you recall. Oh, I don't <laughs> we, like, yeah. <laughs> very, occasionally casting um, offices are next to post offices and they'll grab us for like a, a scream or two. I thought it was very fun. <laughs> you I did, I think, more than I did because <laughs> I was always like, well, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> I thought it was fun. I thought it was so interesting. But it is weird. I was like, oh, you just need me to scream. Like, no problem. But then. Oh, I remember the one that I did now. Oh, which one was it? It was like the, the for Bates, the Arkham Club or whatever. They're, they're basically like their sex club. The phone line. Oh, my into... gosh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> you did that. That is Jessica, everybody. <laughs> you that episode. That wonderful uh, background noise is... There we go. I don't know if it was me in the final right cut, but I definitely <laughs> remember doing that one. That's amazing. Yeah, but it's true. I remember doing it, and I was like, oh, I thought I'd just, like, say something into a microphone, but it's tricky. Yeah, especially, like, when you're... Re what Lucas was talking about when he was, like, reenacting a scene where he got the, the shit beat out of him, basically... And having to like recreate that energy yeah. after the fact. I'm like, I never even thought about that. Yeah. As an actor. Can you, and I'm curious, like, are you allowed to kind of do what you need to do as an actor? To I mean, if you're like out of breath, like you're yeah. gonna have to like work. You know. I think he was saying that he had done that, and that uh, in order to, because like I guess in the scene he got this is for Euphoria. He got his yeah. he got punched in the face a bunch. Yeah. And he technically, had broken his nose. And uh -huh. so they had to, they stuffed oh, um, God. Uh, the sound for that. up into his nostrils to get like that. that oh, thing, the like, stuffy sound. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. I'm like, that's really smart. Yeah, that is really <laughs> smart. I thought you were going to describe how they make the cracking noise. Oh, and no. I was going to end the live right now. <laughs> I can't. It happens, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but that, that is really interesting. Um, stuff that you don't really think of, which is yeah. why it's a whole nother payday. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
people are talking about their ADR experiences. Yeah, it is, it can be very awkward. You know what else is really awkward when we have to do awkward scenes with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I'm just getting sidetracked for just a quick second because I don't know if Lindsay's watching right now, but we had to do, this was the most awkward scene I've ever had to do in my entire career for special, the Netflix mm -hmm. series that we were doing. Um, it was a sex scene, but it was, it's, it's Netflix, it's cable, so free game. And let me just tell you, like, I, I just have so much more respect for actors having to go into a room with complete strangers and yeah. just let go. I mean, I, I was like, Lindsay's over here pregnant. I'm like, oh, my God, like, I'm a mom. Like, I should not be doing this. But, yeah, it's it, – we have – there's some strange things we have to do. Yeah. I would see – I remember for The Strain, I think it was it was the first season of The Strain. Maybe it was in the pilot. And there was a character – that I was essentially telling these, you know, handsome gentlemen that I'm pregnant mm -hmm. with their babies for an entire, <laughs> you know, two sessions. So I was like, this is weird, but okay. This, we'll is, my, this is what they're paying me to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be worse, I suppose. Right. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to talk about, because you have such a unique experience um, during The Force Awakens. Oh, yes. With your open call experience, n not many people have experienced that. I don't know if there's ever been such a big open call for such a, like, highly anticipated movie before that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a pretty big one. Um, yeah. And you spearheaded that, which is pretty awesome. So I'm just so curious. I mean, I know you've told me the experience a few times, but I know other people would like to hear it, but also along the way, just things that maybe you've learned <laughs> in <laughs> just the yeah. amount of people. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of it was like, this is just a practice. This is like, you know, not yeah. incredibly fruitful, but just well, kind of talk. Like, like yeah. I think it was, you know, unfortunately, so we were doing the open calls simultaneously in the U.S. and the U.K. Mm. So they were doing their own out there right. that Nina Gold was spearheading. Right. And I went out on for three weeks in the Midwest um, doing it. And when we first started, it was under the cloak of just like a Disney movie. And yeah. I think it was St. Paul, Minnesota, that we we were an hour into our um, uh, open call in Minnesota. And it was the news broke that it was actually Star Wars. Oh my, so what yeah. happened at that moment? Well, it was funny because in, in St. Paul, I think 125 people showed up to that open call. No way! Yes. <laughs> because they didn't know what it was. And I, I don't, I don't oh. really know how big that community is. Yeah. We, we, we started there and then by the time we got to our next city, which I can't remember what order we were in, but uh, I think maybe it was St. Louis, like, then it was like thousands of people and yeah. then Lucasfilm was at a point where they were like well the news is out let's just embrace it yeah and so uh we had to go it was myself and an extras casting director right. Marielle and Naviato we went to uh we started doing morning shows which is not my bag you know what I didn't know that yeah <laughs> It Tell me about that. <laughs> it was horrible. I mean, ah. for someone who was never an actor. And you always be, say that, but you're such an I, like, amazing public speaker. I have never been more rigid in my life than when you're standing, when you're, I guess we were standing next to two anchors that do this on a regular basis at yeah. like five in the morning. You yeah. Know? Right. Oh my God. So yeah. it was very stressful for me. I was like, can I do as little talking as possible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I would totally shit myself. You're incredibly brave for doing that. I, it was not something that I signed up for when I yeah. started this Right, process. right, right. It just happened. But yeah. It was definitely like, you don't know what you're going to get. And for, like, I think they found a lot in UK because also they were shooting in, in London. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So logistically, it worked out. They pulled a few people from their open call, but yeah. um, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't end up finding anybody in the U.S., which I think they should have just generally like hired one or two people. But it mm -hmm. ended up being like one of those things. If it wasn't going to be the leads, then mm -hmm. they weren't. Then they weren't interested. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was it was an incredible experience. It was we did three weeks um, leading up to Thanksgiving through the Midwest and. And I met a lot of people during that process that um, that moved to LA afterwards, which was which is wild to see that and people that yeah. I'm so in touch with. Yeah, yeah. 
It was yeah, like that's, American Idol, though. <laughs> I, I know. I, I mean, stuff like that doesn't really happen. So it's really interesting. And it's so cool that you did meet some people along the way and you're still, you're still in touch with them. Right. right? Yeah. And that was some... David Gridley who just commented, I don't know. In some oh, way. is that right? <laughs> he was one of them. He yeah. Did. <laughs> I think I, I can't remember which city we met in. Maybe it was St. Louis or maybe it was afterwards, but it I was. I forgot that he was one of them. Oh yeah. my God. That's so funny. Well, I know, you know, Keith is another one of your guys that, yeah. um, yeah, but that's just, that's such an interesting experience. Um, any other fun stories from just that experience that I mean there I out? had I had a stalker in Detroit. Oh, oh. <laughs> um but Detroit. it was like, yeah, it was it wasn't in Detroit. It was like right outside of it and I can't like Somerset or something like that. It was yeah. just outside of Detroit, but it was somebody who cuz our process was like we would go and do it was, we set it up like a meet and greet versus an open call. Okay. And so we would we, would, we knew exactly what we were looking for. Yeah. So we would have these like hundreds of people come in, say hello. If they had resumes, they could leave resumes, like whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then if you kind of looked and sounded what. Yep. Something happened. We lost Jess. Hang on. Let's try to go live with her again. Instagram has been finicky lately. There you are. <laughs> well you're back <laughs> yeah uh, but if they looked and sounded like what we were looking for then yeah. I would send them to the next person next to me and then they would give them a, a, an appointment time and then that night I would send out wow. all of the um a, like appointments or, or they would get their contact information and then I so there was one guy who didn't make it through the first round of hello how are you you know so the, the initial round is just a quick chat yeah Okay. Real quick, like seconds, yeah. which made me feel really bad because yeah. I had waited for hours to get into, yeah, you know, um, but it was definitely, uh, it was definitely a whirlwind. And so then yeah. the next day I would stay and then I would do the auditions for the next day while Mary Ellen, who was the extras passenger director, she would fly to the next city and then set up all of the morning show meetings or whatever it was the next day while I was doing the auditions in a different city. So it's a whole thing. Um, but there was one guy who was not okay with not making it through to the uh -oh. next round. And so it was, um, he waited until the very end of our day, which would end at like 6, 7 p.m. Yeah. And um, he like followed me and was asking me to, for the next round if, he, if I can just slot him in. And so the hotel security had to be like, oh I was afraid gosh. that he was going to follow me to my room or something. Right, you know? right. Because I was staying in the same hotel that yeah. we were doing yeah. Anyways, we made it out alive. It was you fun. did. And you're stronger <laughs> for it. Maybe some battle wounds, but Maybe. they look good on you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, fun overall. Yeah. yeah. Such a such a crazy experience. Um so the other thing there is there is a few other questions that sure. um you know, one of the main thing that actors are always asking, especially right now, is like what, how do we think things will change after all of this? Um, and I, and I think, and a, and a lot of them are always asking like, when are things going to go back to normal? I mean, we don't have answers to that, you know, um, no one really does, but, um, it's kind of interesting to hear what everyone's thoughts are on how we think that this is going to change the process for us, for yes. actors in general, everyone has their own sort of thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I have my thoughts, <laughs> you know, curious what yours are. I think for casting, I mean, obviously this is going to be a case by case basis. Yeah. But I think um, I always prefer to have somebody in the room if I can, mm -hmm. if I can choose it. So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not going to be one who like goes directly to self tapes only Same. and then calls back people in person. Yeah. I, I would prefer to have you in the room. Um, I think maybe, maybe casting offices will start, um, maybe scheduling fewer people in a time block so it's more mm -hmm. spread out yeah um, I don't know about that stuff but I, you know the the question of should you shake hands anymore is definitely out the window <laughs> yeah I will say I was talking to someone about that yesterday like it was always kind of a 50 50 thing and actors mm -hmm. would always reach their hand out to me and me me just being a nice person yeah. I would sh shake back 
but I didn't enjoy shaking <laughs> a stranger's hand. I mean, there's nothing really like pleasurable coming out of it. You're a stranger. I don't know where your hands have been. You could have just used the bathroom and not wash your hands for all I know, oh, I know. you know? And then but I come there's back also and... like a sense of connection in that. Like when you first meet somebody, yeah. I think that that's, in my head, like if I don't shake someone's hand, I feel like it's not, it's not like a memorable, like mm. we're not, and not just in the space of casting, yeah. it's like yeah. an introduction yeah. in any way. True. So I, I don't know, for me, it's like, I never minded it. Um, yeah. Yes, I did wash my hands a lot, but you know, I did, it wasn't something that I was against by any means, but yeah. now I feel like everybody's going to be against it. Yeah, no, certainly, certainly handshaking, you know, yeah. And it's, you know, it's different when you're shaking someone's hand when you're meeting them out for coffee, but that's like one person you're meeting versus right. like a hundred people coming through. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think, I think that's going to be a thing where, you know, maybe we just slow down the process for ourselves. I, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with like the scheduling of it all. I yeah. think when we do go back, is, is it first up, first up people that have already yeah. in the middle of production and shooting yeah. that are going and then all of and then then becomes like an actor availability mess. yeah yeah um, but uh I don't I don't know that kind of stuff but I and I also my theory is like I don't know if pilot season will exist after this I don't think it will I I, I mean for sure I think it's over now oh, you yeah. know it's over for sure this year I don't know that it's because this is kind of the ultimate test of doing away with pilot season and seeing yeah. how that fends for for because networks in order for them to con to stay competitive i think now they have to really blend okay. into the cycle mm -hmm. of, of what the cable and streaming platform totally is. which i think will be really interesting yeah um and i i do i think the people who have the money you know the studios are gonna be eager to because they there is obviously um, financial loss across the board with everyone right now. But I think yeah. the people who still have that, you know, the, the change in the back, the studios are still going to want to push out a ton of content potentially once this yeah. is over. Um, I'm just curious the what the movie going experience is going to be like after this. The movie going experience. And also they're talking about still, you know, opening things back up, but continually continuing social distancing for a while, Yeah, which you can't really social distance as an actor. I mean, you can social distance in an audition, but not when you're like making out with your co-star. You right. <laughs> not really good yeah. social distancing. So, I, I mean, they obviously can't just write content towards that. So I don't know. That'll. I, I don't really. That's just an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. But and will crews be smaller because of this? Yeah, I know. I, I think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be as simple as go back to normal you know yeah. but i do think that there's going to be an eagerness luckily there's a lot of content that we can all watch right now through all of our platforms but they're eager to get new stuff out there yeah you know? what, I've, what i've been hearing is that for pilots that were originally picked up to uh -huh. be made into pilots yeah. is now a couple of the networks are asking the showrunners for second episodes just the scripts to see if, if they, they want to pick it up pick it up to series that way wow. Wow, yeah. which is actually kind of great for writers, you know, or showrunners. It's kind of yeah, um, but now it's cheaper for them to pick up a full series than mm -hmm. just do a pilot. Yeah, which could be a good thing, you know. It's longevity. Yeah, <laughs> which is nice. Um, let me see. Is someone? There's a lot of questions coming in here. Can you do self? -care? Oh, somebody said, do you think that? Um, we're going to be auditioning in person and then doing Zoom callbacks. If anything, I think it would be the other way around. Totally. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, um, I think it would be the other way around too. I, again, it's going to be really hard to <clears throat> change casting so that it's just completely on tape. There's so much loss yeah. there when we're not in the room with you. Um, <clears throat> I think that having social distancing and having you in the room is a better option personally, yeah. you know, um, and obviously not coming in if you're having any sure. symptoms or if yeah. you're not feeling well at all. I think another thing is going to be like, um, p people traveling in for auditions are probably going to be, um, minimized. Yeah. Oh know? yeah. Or even just like people tr that I feel like maybe they're going to 
put in a two week period, but before someone comes in to shoot also, like they'd have to travel in earlier. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, people are, are flying from job to job in many cases or, you know, whatever their situation is that they're, yeah. they're not going to want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, just reading through these questions right here. Just do can you just sell, um, let me just see what some of these questions in the question box are. Um, um, this is something that sometimes people ask a lot. Um, you know, we've experienced this together <laughs> a lot when we really like somebody. Um, it's, I think I'll, I can kind of tweak this question a little bit into, you know, sometimes we'll really love somebody um, and we'll push for them, but there might be um, a different viewpoint coming from the creative team or they're on board with us and they really like somebody, but the studio and network doesn't feel the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and so we sometimes have to do a little bit of a fight. Um, so how often do you experience stuff like that? <clears throat> I mean, I feel like, um, oh, I'm like, there's like two distinct cases in my head that I can think yeah. of. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it just depends. I, it happens a lot, I think, uh, on different levels. Um, or we had the, actually, I don't remember which season it was. <laughs> I think it was the two of us. Uh, for Bates, when we had the showrunners were split in in their creative you know, we had mm -hmm. two choices that we were down to. Yeah. And then one, the one showrunner liked the one that we yeah. liked and then yeah. the other show. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was person. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, without giving names away. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it's like, even between the creatives, they were at odds, but you know, they figured out what they wanted ultimately or whoever had the sway. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it'll happen on a network level from time to time or like, Yes, it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of people involved that all have yeah. to agree on one person. I mean, when we were working on 11-22-63, that was like, and I, and I know you've worked on stuff that have an insane approval process, but for us it was yeah. first send our favorites to the showrunner, then send that favorite to the Bad Robot creative team, mm -hmm. then send that favorite specifically to J.J., then yeah. send that choice specifically to Stephen King. Yeah. Then send that choice to Warner Brothers, and then send that choice to Hulu. <laughs> yeah, I it mean, was so it was like, years. and they want, and they didn't want to combine any of those people, and it was to get everybody on board with the same person. Luckily, yeah. I think because there was an understanding of how many chefs there were in the kitchen yeah. or whatever, they tried to really work together to agree. Yeah. But that was just like. I mean, that's, that's the hard thing, you know, is you can be perfect and amazing for the role, but it, it's not, it's certainly not just us. There's an insane amount of people who have to all agree and have their own visions of what this role is too. Yeah. And it can also be like, we did also Bad Robot. We did the pilot of Believe with April. Yeah. And that was, a, it was a crazy thing because um, we, it was right after, I think it's the master or master with uh philip seymour hoffman and joaquin phoenix mm -hmm. um sorry i was reading the question sorry say that one more time yeah the, uh the, after the master had come out with uh -huh. phoenix. oh yeah um uh and uh rami malik was in that and he mm -hmm. had been in a couple of things and mm -hmm. we had we wanted to make an offer to him mm -hmm. for our guest star um mm -hmm for the show and this was before Mr. Robot yeah and um NBC didn't know who he was on the TV side and so um they Which wouldn't approve him really interesting but yeah it, they wouldn't approve him and it, it took because we had um we had uh, uh Alfonso Coron as our one of our showrunners and uh or co-creators and uh, right. the director of the episode. Right. And he was so passionate for Rami that he had, that he was like knocking down every door to get him approved. And, and it took that. Right. And he wasn't, approved. he wasn't auditioning at that point. No. Right? Yeah. No. So um, did he get approved? Yeah. Eventually he got approved. Yeah. But, and he was, yeah. cause that, that guest star, it was like, 
he was the focus of the whole pilot episode. Yeah. Um, and there's no reason why it couldn't have been him. They just didn't yeah. know who he was. And that's right. the reason why they were using as to why they wouldn't approve him. And yeah. it was so, you know, crazy. Right. Well, that's interesting because there we had, an, I don't know if Eric is watching, but there was an instance on Revolution where something similar, there, it was a huge, it was a recurring guest star role with an option for the second season. So it was a big role. Um, and there was this guy who blew Erica and I away and we loved him. Um, and it was Matt Viro. I mean, you know who he is. <laughs> and um, yeah. And uh, he hadn't done anything at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, the the network was like he didn't have anything else to show for himself. It wasn't even that they were. He was a theater actor, right? He was, he was in Spring he, Awakening, and he was a, he was yes, yeah. that was kind of it. So yeah. I got a bootleg version of Spring Awakening, <laughs> like someone that something like filmed in the back of the theater, and I watched the whole thing. I like Spring <laughs> Awakening anyway. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I cut and edited that bootleg footage from the back of the theater um, in a way that showed what I thought was going to help get him approved. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny, but like, that's what did it. <laughs> I like Tepper. So, Illegal. There Illegal. <laughs> I mean, probably. But, but hey, he got the job. But hey, he got a great job. <laughs> he then became a series regular on a show that you, that you worked on that one, right? No. Oh, um, yeah. but he didn't, he, yeah, we, we helped his career. Damn I know. It. I think that's, that's <laughs> literally my favorite thing to do when I go to, <laughs> so when I go to, um, uh, we'll agents, send for that. yeah, when we, when I go to agents and managers and they're like, oh, we don't have a reel for them. Like they, everybody should know who this person is. And yeah. probably most people don't aside from us. Yeah. And so I'll go and I'll cut it a full reel for their actor. Oh, yeah myself and then I'll send it to them and be like absolutely there you go there's your client's oh, yeah. reel I I uh I've cut so many actor reels and and I've done so many weird things to get yeah. people approved um because you get that specific note from the network they're like well she's just really like a tough she's just yeah. really tough she doesn't <laughs> really have like a soft side to her and we're like Okay, <laughs> um, she's an actress, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, they can figure it out. Yeah, um, but we'll have to just like get really creative. And I will. I know I've done this with you in the room, and I will go down their IMDb and look up the weirdest stuff that they may have done. I'll Google it. I am like, I can probably go into private investigation after this. I mean, <laughs> I, I will search for the YouTube weird short that yeah. that person has done and find that really soft side. Because the interesting thing is you would think that the agents and managers would help do that. You know, I will call them up and they'll say, we, everyone loves her. Um, she's perfect for this. The network's having a hard time approving her. They think that she's too tough for it. Do you have anything softer? And they're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, so it just ends here, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, and I'm not ready to give up. So we yeah. are, we're, we're, I mean, we'll just do what I'll, I'll do weird things to get an actor hired. I mean, and we've done it before on the last thing we worked on where we had to have the writers in order to get the network yes. approval, yes. the writers to write scenes specifically yes. to show the actor's range. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we had someone at Chelsea help us and, and yeah. read them for like yeah. 45 minutes to get that. Oh, so yeah. it was like, yeah. 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 She, yeah. She, I mean, she w had already left LA at that point. They were like, well, there's a lot happening to this character. I don't know if she can do the really like ragey stuff or the flirty stuff. And we're like, we will get you those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite part was like, it was a limited series and you were never going to see those parts of her character I know, I know. in that show. Yeah. So they're just like, yeah. let's just find out to find yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? She nailed it. That's true. So she did it. She got those scenes and she nailed it. Yeah. Um, but we weren't going to give up. Um, another actor on that series who, no names, but the agent was like, he's not available. Goodbye. And I was like, he's going to be available. <laughs> And you know who I'm talking about. Yes. And sometimes we have to fight the good fight, you yeah. know, even if they're like, oh, well, they're on another series. And I'm like, but let's but when this. and where, but and when and where, <laughs> and let, let's, let's dig into this a little bit more. And yeah. he did it. And he, um, 
had a great run on that show. So um, sometimes we are a little bit, have to go to bat a little bit more often, yeah. but it's part of the job. Yeah. All good. Um, so s let's see if there anything else has come up, but I have some other things here. Um, uh, so these have been answered before. Um, <laughs> um, someone asked me, I'm an open call. Do you have well-known actors showing up? That would like, be nice. <laughs> well-known actors? No. For Star Wars, it was like dads and their daughters. Like, oh, really? When the daughters are like, I don't, I don't know why I'm here. Why, my, my dad, dad wanted me to do this. Call. I don't want to be here. <laughs> do I get my ice cream now? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. That's entertaining. Um, so uh, this is a fun question that I think actors love to hear from all casting directors and it's what are um what are your biggest pet peeves i know um, you, you've been asked that a lot but my it's... first biggest pet peeve is when people walk in with excuses mm. because it's like it doesn't like i know how long you've had with this material whether yeah. it's a short amount of time or not like we under we have an understanding of what that is yeah um so I hate excuses and, and, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. People that come in unprepared. Yeah. is a big problem for me. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, we've worked together for a long time. What I, I know, I know. I <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what I was just trying to think of things that, um, people I think that, that suck the energy out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> a big pet peeve for me is when, and Erica kind of said this too, but, when um actors come in and read and they're great and we send them for a choice and then they're they're, they're the choice and then they pass oh yeah i hate that too that's true <laughs> it's like it makes us look ridiculous and it's like um, a total waste of time for us yeah i mean if you didn't like it but you came in and drove across town and memorized yeah. the lines and put some thought into it um oh that reminds me another thing that i hate is reschedules <laughs> oh yeah that's for, literally just for the heck of it too right it's just it makes me so upset when um an actor reschedules at the last minute and i don't it, it may be lack of communication between the actor and the agent or lack yeah. between the agent and us but it makes me so mad mm. because it's a blatant disrespect for our time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also you just wasted that opportunity for someone who actually wants to be here. Yeah. You know? So for yeah. me, it's like, if it's a real reason, like someone is, is sick right. or a car trouble, right. like so something right. like that, like I understand, but it's yeah. like, it makes me so upset when someone yeah. cancels last minute that I've started a new policy in my office. Mm. Amazing. That um, if someone cancels at the 11th hour and it's not a real like legitimate reason, or they just haven't, had time to review or whatever it is like you are now on my self tape list like if you want to be considered right. for this you have to self tape yeah i'm not going to spend my like another slot for somebody Absolutely. else that wants to be there but that Absolutely. makes me so mad yeah especially when you re reschedule someone two two times and then they pass yes I'm All, like, that, and that happens often yes makes me um, so upset yeah and the other thing is when people and this happens a lot to me too is when they don't show up yeah. And then I'm just about to either call or email their agent. And then all of a sudden an email comes through with, oh, they couldn't make it, but she self-taped. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, oh. That, but also, if someone, like, that is not based here, you know that they're not based here. Or, you know, yes. whatever it is. Like, yes. That me yes. Crazy. Yes. Oh, they're, they're out of town currently. And then, like, you, they're at the apartment in New York that they pay rent on? Is that what you mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you mean by out of town got it yeah. um and it's normally fine I mean it, it is what it is either you can if, if you're in New York and you're able to be a local hire that's fine you know you don't have to lie or, or fabricate the truth or in, in any way just don't waste our time just don't waste our time and the, the main thing to know about that being a local hire and I know there's a lot of different ideas about that but for the most part um this isn't an, it's not an instance where you fly yourself out and, and production is going to put you up in a hotel at the very least and like give you some like other, you know, incentives for flying yourself out. If you say that you're a local hire, 
you are able to get there completely, put yourself up, get yourself around town, not be picked up by set or production. You are treated as if you are local to Los Angeles. And on top of that, you need an LA address um, that you can provide. It doesn't yeah. have to be, you don't have to go out and buy a second property. But um, anyway, just wanted to throw that out there because sometimes I've, I've had a lot of experience in with that on the last series that I was just working on with Act not quite grasping the whole <laughs> meaning of what it means to be a local hire. So yeah. I always like to reiterate that. Um, someone asked us, can we use a ring light for self tapes? Oh, sure. You mean like this? <laughs> or this. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. <laughs> um, I don't care as long as it's balanced lighting. That's yeah, I, I don't care, care either. Yeah. I just like, I have no, this, the, the house that I'm at is so dark. Um, and I've, I've actually, ha I've bought this for auditions. Yeah. Um, cause I thought it would be good. And so I've been using it and it holds your cell phone, which is nice, but yeah, yeah I, I don't care either. I, it doesn't really, I doesn't, I, I see a lot of self tapes, um, with that. And I, I do notice it, but it, it whatever, you know? I don't, yeah. I mean, it's a self tape. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything crazy fancy. Just yes. puts the self tape together. <laughs> yes, totally. Uh, oh any self tape tips for quarantine, especially for those of us who live completely alone. Mm. Um, decent lighting framing mm -hmm. is like mid bust up mm -hmm. uh, like Romney right now perfect mm -hmm. example um and uh completely alone i would say use any resources you have doing zooms or we auditions or whatever it is to have a reader because we all know that it's you know auditioning is different than doing the job but you have mm -hmm. to give yourself an opportunity to connect with somebody mm -hmm. um so i would advise not to pre-record yourself because yeah that I think is distracting for most it people. Is, it is distracting. Have. And it's pretty simple. I mean, you, you really just need two devices, one to record yourself with and one to FaceTime or Skype with on the other one. So mm -hmm. um, if you record with your cell phone, um, then just email an actor friend the sides. Yeah. Give them a time of when you want to get on FaceTime and record it or, um, or, or run through it. And then you're, you're we're hearing their audio and you're recording yourself with the other device. So you just really need a computer and a phone or a tablet and a phone. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's really the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and the phones um, are great. I mean, quality is awesome. So you don't have to go and do anything crazy fancy. Yeah, not, not even at all. Um, what non-traditional survival jobs have you seen actors have? Non-traditional. Do you mean like right now? Because that's an interesting question. Like to survive this, <laughs> I'm like I'm ready to sign up for whatever that is. I know. Too, like, so. What are these jobs you're speaking of? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I've seen. Um, I don't know if it's really considered non-traditional, but I feel like I have had some friends that you know are ushers at the Geffen or you know mm. do stuff like that. That it's mm. um, regularly scheduled or different theaters. Now we're pre COVID nineteen. Got it. Yeah. Now I don't know what the what the job is, but let me <laughs> find out. Yeah. Um, share, share it here. Share yeah, the wealth. But pre, yeah, I think that those are those are interesting, or, or getting involved in different um, actor studios in different mm -hmm. ways. I mean, yeah. I don't really know what would be what would fall in that category. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the nice thing about I think this time that we have right now is two things is the time to figure out maybe some of that stuff, but also realize that so many businesses are going online now um, and to kind of figure out how you fit in that way. I know um, there's a lot of need for any sort of web web developing. And I know, you know, oh, yeah. um, we have some actor friends who do web developing at home because you know you work from home and you can create your own schedule and it's such a high need especially right now and there's so many online classes that you can take for that um and it pays pretty well so there's even services where if you have a website and you have an issue with your website you just live chat with someone and they fix it for you and that pays pretty well so yeah. it just takes some like online courses and honestly a lot of youtube tutorials just an, an idea that i've had because of everything going online these days um about like virtual assisting probably virtual should. assisting is a big one too there's so many virtual assistant websites that are probably really busy right now i don't know any off the top of my head but if you do a google search i'm sure you'll find some yeah 
um, <laughs> painting, wallpaper, like construction, you yep. know, all fun <laughs> things. <clears throat> um, what are your thoughts about social media and actors? I know we um, kind of talked about this a little bit a while ago, but. Yeah, I think, I, personally, I think it's a great resource. I'm not someone who is um, actively looking at, like, follower count. That If I ever look at someone's social media, it's not what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But there will be times, like, I am scrolling through my own Instagram stuff, like, just through, I don't know what the section is, but it's, like, where they just populate your feed. Um, where it's not stuff that you actually follow, but it's like, oh, based on the explore. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I'll, I'll thumb through that and stumble upon things or, you know, that are, that end up being like, oh, that person looks interesting. Let's look at that. So mm -hmm. I, I've, that's definitely happened to me before, but I don't, um, it's not something that I'm actively looking at in terms of, right. you know, bringing people in because they have such a following or whatever it is. But that's, that's the most things I think, um, you know, being, being uh, respectful through your mm -hmm. social media also is a big thing. Cause yeah. I, before I put you on a set for six months to seven years, like yes. I'm going to make sure you're not a crazy person. Right. In trouble. Um, so those, are, those are my, like what I look for specifically, but nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, I think this is an agent question. Um, from an agent or for an agent? From. Oh, okay. Think. Um, how much follow-up from agents and managers is too much? <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's pilot season, don't follow up until pilot season's over. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, um, it is fair. Yeah. And then, or if you are just to see if someone is in the mix, like at a later date, <sighs> but you will probably know if someone's in the mix if they're you... in or not. You will know. <laughs> you will know if your client's in the mix. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, right? Um, but I think that for pilot season, that's a fair response. And I think, you know, for just generally speaking, I think it's fair to reach out once via yeah. email is fine. Yeah. Um, to ask you know, how it went or if there's any, because also if like someone, if, if it's not a great experience in the room for a specific reason yeah. and someone reaches out to me yeah. for feedback, like I'm going to get on the phone with that person and yeah. be very, right. fairly honest with that. I love answer. that. Yeah. I think that's so important, you know, and sometimes it's hard. We're so busy and they want feedback um, and they just keep pestering and pestering, but the feedback is really important I think if if you know I try to give as much constructive feedback as I can um and many times it's you know I I don't know what to tell you I I gave this person a lot of specific direction yeah. and they couldn't do it and I don't really know why if they were having an off day um and it doesn't mean that personally for myself I would never bring in that person again but if I'm consistently bringing somebody in because, you know, they're right for it. They have an interesting look. The agent is pushing them. And they continuously, for whatever reason, can't grasp, grasp the direction. Um, there's been times where, you know, it's like, okay, they're, they're just not going to be able to do this. With me, at least. I don't know if it's me or, or what the issue is. But um, they're just not taking direction. And I, and I can't bring in this person again. Yeah. Um, feedback is consistent. Oh, sorry, I was reading these. I think uh, also knowing that like, as an actor, when you get good feedback when like, but you're not booking the jobs. I mean, those I think those things are kind of unrelated, because there are so many things like we had the experience where, you know, for the the TNT thing, mm -hmm. that, you know, we read so many guys that could have booked the role that we were working yeah. on. But then somebody just sent in a tape that blew oh everybody else yeah. out of the water. I wanted that to talk about that too. That doesn't discredit the work that you did as an actor or how 100%. good your audition was, but 100%. it's just somebody completely, like yeah. the, the bar has been set now. Yeah. And I, I mean, we, let, let me just tell you, there, um, there was a role on that show that was tricky, I guess. And you're so right, though. I mean, this self-tape came in from your genius brain who thought to set him up. I mean, it really was 
a great idea. It was a shot in the dark though. Because... It, but yes, it, it was, but oh my God, he did it. And he was, we, let's just say we watched his self tape. How many times do you think? <laughs> I don't even know, but I have this visual of us standing around my computer and you just like with popcorn. Oh my God. <laughs> we were like snacks. We were always, I was always snacking. <laughs> Mostly so Cheez-Its. I'm sitting there with Cheez-Its and I'm like, can we play it one more time? Just play it one more time. <laughs> and um, I mean, just to, just to talk about that specific self tape. I mean, it obviously it was, it was taped in like an, a, the way a self tape should be taped, but there was something about the way his connection came across, I think on camera, mm -hmm. that is something that I personally noticed with self tapes when a, an actor is able to connect with the material um, and just really take their time with it. Um, it really creates a beautiful self tape. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was also because it was such an intense character that had so many layers. Also, someone asked, what was it? What was show? Was yeah. it? It hasn't aired yet. Yeah. I don't know if it will air, but it doesn't matter because yeah. no one has seen it. It but, hasn't um, aired yet. It was the lead of the series, essentially, um, big series regular role. Yeah. And it was just like, it, it was such an intense and intimate uh, setting for the scene. Yeah. That I, the way he staged it also was yeah. very intimate and yeah. very like very close. intimate and connected yes. and it was just, like you could not stop watching I've shown so many people I probably shouldn't have shown so many people that stuff tape, but it was just like it's it was mind-blowing to me but I think that's a really good point for self-taping especially when you're doing something really dramatic and emotional yeah. if you are not if you're too far away from the camera like we can't connect with you you know, like when you're watching TV and movies and you see a really dramatic emotional scene, that's never going to, you're never going to see that on a wide shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you should always keep to that like closer medium frame. But, um, but yeah, it was really sort of the way that he had staged himself knowing yeah. what you, what he wanted to feel from that scene. Like reading the scene, knowing as an actor, how do I want to feel and how can I feel? film this so that they feel that too yeah and I feel like that's what he did and it was brilliant and yeah. you've ne I, I've never got that was a particular that was a particular show that was incredibly hard to get people approved on and I don't think there was any disconnect I think it was just they were really excited about it and I yeah. think they wanted to be very you know explore all the options as they say yeah. um but with that role like I've never seen an actor be so approved so quickly I know but that was the thing because like when we sent that approval out just to our creative team I think I wrote in the email like if if this guy is a yes. character I don't know who is <laughs> yeah I think you I think you even said like if he's if if he's not it I quit casting or something like that which is how I felt. You know, it's like if, if this guy is not yeah. perfect for the role, I need to go back to school and, and, yeah, and get I mean, a new degree. It was it, like, I think it would be on par for me with Benedict Cumberbatch's yes. for Khan. Oh my God. Like, that was, I think, you know. Yeah. We can't release the self tape, guys. We can't. We can't. It's not allowed. I know. <laughs> but I, I didn't work on Star Trek. I know you did, but I have seen Benedict's self tape. And that's another one where I, you know, well, he's obviously a brilliant actor, but he filmed that in a way of when you're watching the scene, how do you want to, and I'm not talking about props and set or anything like that. I'm just talking about emotionally, how do you want to connect with this character? Yeah. And that's how he did that self tape still definitely that self the Benedict self tape is in like one of the top five best auditions I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Cause also he did it in such a different way. Cause yeah. I feel like a lot of the guys that we were seeing for that role, they all went the like the very mustache twirly villainous yes. way. Yes. And he gave the character so much heart that oh you're like, God, oh, yes. oh, all right. This is who the yeah. character is. It was incredible. Um, there's a lot of great auditions released on YouTube and out in the world, I don't, I think that it's kind of an interesting thing to to just watch, you know, auditions. Um, not every office needs readers, but that's another interesting thing after this that you can um, volunteer for because I do think it's really insightful. Um, what did he do? The self tape that was so good again. Uh, I right now everyone wants to watch it. <laughs> um, 
it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he just humanized the character more yeah. than made him the like the distinct baddie because yeah. that's you know I, I mean I don't I can't remember if he knew who the real character he was auditioning for was because everything was so cloak and dagger but um, yeah uh, he just went he humanized the character yeah I think that yeah. was the ultimate yeah um, yeah I think that's the biggest kind of takeaway with stuff like that sometimes actors get material and we get material and we're like this is so cheesy, <laughs> you know, how are they gonna yeah. make this so that it's not mustache twirly and being, it's kind of your job to humanize that role yeah. and make it incredibly real for them. I mean, it's, you have to make it your own mm -hmm. and not lean into what's on the page. And that's a whole different. I think it's just knowing no, the tone of the project. Knowing the, yeah, knowing the tone too, yeah. for sure. Um, there was a question from the lovely Dominic. Yeah. Um, any advice for actors that are booking guest stars and recurring guests in terms of being considered for series regulars? Oh. That sometimes feels out of reach. Um, I don't know. I mean, for him specifically, he's got a great reel of material. So I don't, like if someone was to submit him, I would definitely consider him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think it's, I, I personally don't know the answer to that question because yeah. your material showcases you enough. It's, yeah. it, depending on what the characters are in the world that they're building, I think it's, it's I, I wouldn't struggle with the idea of bringing that person in. Yeah, I, you I know? think it's 100% it's not an experience issue um, at all. I think it's maybe not the right role has come around, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and also making sure that your reel um, is showing other casting directors who aren't as familiar with you what you're capable of, what your range is, because that's such a huge part of it. You know, there's so many actors who, oh, I just that just reminded me of my biggest pet peeve <laughs> before we run out of time. Yeah. I think my biggest, biggest pet peeve more than anything is when I'm going, and obviously this happens daily when I'm working, but when we're going through submissions, and when I get to a point where there's submissions without footage, I don't know about you, but I, my job on that role is done. <laughs> yes, um, like, I agree. Depending on the size of the role, if it's like a series regular, really big role, sometimes those actors are too cool for having a reel, I don't know. And, and I'll still go through it, but if it's like a co-star role, I mean. You have to have something. You have to what? You have to have something. Like, you have to have something. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I don't care about slate shots personally, but me like, th that's not going to tell me what you can do. No. But you have to have a clip of something of you mm -hmm. acting. Yes. Because like, something. They're, first of all, your submission, if you have no demo reel, no clips, nothing, is going to go to the very bottom of our, yes. our yeah. submission. Yeah. Um, but also like, we don't have time to chase your agents and managers for material. Like that yeah. should be something that's yeah. in your account so yeah. we can, we can have a quick reference for it because right. like they're, you know, the idea is like, oh, this person looks cool. Like let's get their demo. But the amount of time that we have is very minimal to actually yes. execute that. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine going through all the, all the head people who look interesting, but you'd have to reach out to their agents, managers and say, Hey, you submitted this person. They look cool, but like, got any material? And then I think what's even more frustrating is when they say, oh yeah, here's their reel. And I'm like, it's not uploaded anywhere, you know? Um, so just, there's obviously a lot of actors who don't have anything on their profiles. I am very curious as to how those actors are getting auditions, if any at all, but um, now is your time to, to put something up there. You know, you have all this time to put a great scene on tape in self-tape format. There's been so many great challenges going around. Maybe take something from that and put it up there. But you have to have something. It's so important. Uh, I don't see how you can get anywhere with just a headshot and resume. It just, it just doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. Commercials may be different, you know, um, I, I don't really know. I think their process is a little bit more, uh, physical, but, yeah. um, I don't know anything about commercials. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a way to get around the $22 a minute cost? Is that how much it is on That's breakdown? Insane. That's so much. That seems high. 
I don't know, but that's in, that is crazy. That's very high. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, is there a way to get around the twenty two? Okay, I have thoughts on that. Um, what I'm seeing a lot, I'm just gonna make this quick because we only have like four minutes left, and my Instagram kicks us off. What I personally see a lot of is your reel, and then maybe another reel, and then a whole list of clips. If and if all paying that much money for yes, all of if those all of those clips are in your reel, then like. Save yourself Don't some money, yeah. <laughs> you know, because for me personally, it's much easier to click on one thing and skip through and watch a few seconds of each clip than to click something and like, that wasn't the right thing. Like, should I try this? And it's just much, much easier to click on one full reel and ha make sure that all those clips are in that full reel. Um, so yeah, that's smart. Put your Vimeo link in the notes section. Yeah. Cause that's actually clickable. For us. I don't think I don't think it's clickable, but like well, it's clickable I, when you do the submission notes, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I don't I don't know because you can't. I think there's this the way that they get around it of like if they see an HTTP or a www, then they remove it or something. Right yeah. down to us. I, yeah. I've heard that before, but I feel like if you don't do the www and you just put the thing dot com, mm. you might be able to get around it. And like, if it's there, that's all I care about. But that's like, yes, $22 a minute. Is that, that is a lot. That is a lot. Um, but like I said, the, the easiest way, um, but definitely don't put, don't put a reel and then clips personally. I don't think there's, there's a need for that. If you're putting yeah. double up there, that that's just, that's a lot. I mean, I get very overwhelmed when I pull up that's someone's awesome. submission and there's like 20 clips. I, it's very overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, anyway, now, now we're, yes, it can be very expensive with, with these service sites. Um, so bad. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, we have like one to two minutes left. Um, I try to get off before Instagram kicks us off. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. Nice so time. fun. Yes. It's and always a good time to hang out. Always a good time. Just, you know one little hop over the hill we're not that far <laughs> from each other um take care thank you again for doing this and stay safe stay i healthy. haven't been outside in three days so you haven't no wow okay so well, you're that. doing good i'm going out today i'm though. proud of you do this anymore be careful <laughs> be watching <Okay>. you <laughs> all right all right i will talk to you later talk to you later bye everyone. You, everyone and yes this will be up on igtv later i saw someone ask that okay great